The following is a presentation of New Zealand's assessment of its vulnerabilities to its intelligence sharing information technology operations after an attack on Five Eyes Allies during a multilateral conference. Developers must meet the defined needs and expectations of the customer or client in order to provide software assurance in the product that is delivered. Technical requirements are established based on the security needs and management issues based from expectations. These objectives regarding the needs and expectations are demonstrating performance, stability, and overall security. If software assurance is not evident, then this will affect the product from being sold or acquired by customers and clients. Failure to deliver software assurance may result in additional vulnerabilities in a network system which could be exploited by cyber threat actors when the product is in use, which in turn could lead to compromised data or information. The level of quality such as secure coding is reflected in the software product assures the customer's confidence while conducting daily business operations. The ability to minimize vulnerabilities and weakness along with reducing the overall risk is what the customer's objectives are and what the software should deliver efficiently. Increased confidence is the security of software along with an understanding of the software development life cycle, which is critical to information technology operations and risk management. The key attributes in the software development life cycle are requirement analysis, planning, architectural design, software development, testing, and deployment. The SDLC acts as a guide in the process of achieving high quality, which is cost effective. The inverse correlation between quality and cost is what organizations strive for a short time span. The purpose of the SDLC is to provide structure through phases and evolving development activities. Testing is one of the most important phases because code quality is assessed and performed to assure the code is secure. Increased risk would result if the testing phase was absence, causing vulnerabilities to ensue, which may lead to cyber attacks and data breaches from threat actors. The testing phase helps to assure that once the deployment phase occurs, higher confidence will result to the security and quality of code present. The requirement analysis is important to determine the existing system and the deficiencies currently residing within. The planning phase is important because needs and expectations are determined in order to allocate the amount of resources and estimate a budget for the project. The planning phase also allows for customer feedback to be incorporated during certain intervals to allow change requests as the project evolves. Software design and development are equally important because software requirements are converted into a feasible design plan. And the development phase creates or builds the software following a focused, tactical approach, allowing testing to follow efficiently. The deployment phase follows testing. It is important because it enables customers to try the software in a testing environment to see if satisfaction is met and no deficiencies are present. Supply chain risks are another aspect to IT operations and risk management, which play a critical role in cybersecurity. In the SDLC, supply chain risks arise during the acquisition and provision of software components. The risks can be due to natural causes, such as change in technology, or intentionally due to creating a vulnerability and enabling exploitation. Key players in the supply chain of software development include the suppliers, manufacturers, system integrator, developer, and the acquirer. Intentional risks include counterfeit software, malware and searching, malicious code insertion, malicious code building, and creating a backdoor. Unintentional hazards in the supply chain at the manufacturer developer phase of the SDLC include low quality of code and software vulnerabilities being inserted. When the product is delivered to the buyer or acquirer, it runs risks of being potentially hijacked by malicious threat actors and are having malicious code inserted. When downloading software from the internet, cyber threat actors may comprise the download software file, thus file integrity must be checked and exhibited. Additional supply chain risks include third-party tampering with a product during development delivery the introduction of software defects. During the requirements and planning definition stage, risk feature identifying incorrect and or wrong needs requirements. During the requirements analysis, the stakeholders develop a list of functional and non-functional system requirements. 
Incorrect non-functional requirements may lead to flaws during software design and development. Flaws may also arise during the de development phase, such as low quality of code and intentionally inserting malicious code to create backdoor. During deployment testing phase, if the software is not tested properly, there are risks of flaws going undetected. There is risk of incorrect settings or misconfiguration during the deployment phase. Participants in supply chain can create risks. The acquirer can trigger issues related to requirements proposed on the source selection issue. Defects on the software product also contribute to supply chain risks. How the software is used by an organization along with the maintenance of the software may also lead to operational issues such as technologies or modules being outdated, which increases the risk level. Software products and software assurance cannot always be guaranteed. However, vulnerabilities can be reduced or minimized if properly addressed and identified when discovered. The important aspect to the existing software is whether the security measures patch the vulnerability and maintain up-to-date software fixes once vulnerabilities are known or brought to the attention of the developers. Software programs ranging from Microsoft Office to Google Chrome to Adobe products each have vulnerability components that may be exploited if not updated and fixed by security patches. These software programs can operate on desktops, laptops, and other mobile devices, which puts those machines and the network in a vulnerable state prone to cyber attacks should security patches and applications not be up to date. Some software vulnerabilities that comprise data and information in 2020 were SolarWinds and Zoom. According to Downs, SolarWinds suffered a masterfully orchestrated supply chain exploit which compromised multiple systems of major companies and government entities, which where threat actors ejected code in one of the software updates and the malware was dubbed Sumbers. Zoom experienced several security issues in which credentials suffering resulted in approximately 500,000 user accounts being sold on the dark web. These types of vulnerabilities continue to happen with the threat actors exploiting them at every chance given which is why software options may attempt to further safeguard against the cyber attacks. The software options available range from several methodology versions of the SDLC, such as extreme programming, which falls under the well-known framework of the Agile model. The Agile model focuses on customer satisfaction and interaction along with delivering a product within a short time span. The Agile model divides the product into smaller ones in order to test and incorporate findings the result into the next phase until deployment occurs. Extreme programming is one of the most important frameworks under the umbrella of Agile methodologies. This model is well suited to handle newer technology products and best practice policies including the efficient use of code review, incremental development design, as well as ease for developing quality code which debugs. The extreme programming enables flexibility to incorporate feedback and change requests while also ensuring quality code through testing and review, which delivers a successful product. These options deliver optimum results for customers and their businesses. Software recommendations are given once software is installed and scanned for potential vulnerabilities, which identifies any deficiencies and then ensures that those incidents are handled properly by ranking them on a risk level from high to low. Software should undergo several testing phases to ensure smooth deployment and no glitches, which could compromise security measures. The network system as well as the customer devices should undergo updates to ensure everything has the latest patches or fixes. The software risk should be low in order for the company to pursue the product for deployment and operational use. Thus, software assurance is critical. The supply chain was one of the most predominant vulnerabilities which actors exploit such as the case of the 2020 Sobor and cyber attack. Securing the supply chain is critical and begins by examining the current security measures and policies. The Five Eyes Summit must consider the different software programs being used and evaluate the process in order to determine whether the products are going to be an issue for the end users. Having the knowledge of what product is being used, who the developers are, and whether any third parties are involved or contracted out to deliver the final product establishes accountability any gaps which could potentially be exploited. Supply chains should be tested in intervals upon deployment to reassure the product has not been compromised. Regular monitoring and observing the product is highly recommended, which will serve two purposes, smooth operational runtime 
and early detection of potential incidents to rule out an attack or breach within the supply chain. The costs associated with the software and supply chain recommendations are paying a higher price for software assurance and ensuring the supply chain is scanned before deployment or used to roll out potential tampering of the product, which means scanners will be implemented for software installation. Additional costs will consist of personnel and training to ensure knowledge and expertise on the deliverable product for customer satisfaction. The 5S7 must practice diligence by making sure integrity checks are present. Software Assurance provides an added level of updates and patch or fixes to the software and system to ensure maximum security, which is another cost if these updates are only not built into the product. Con Contracts explicitly entail what the customer client is in agreement to upon purchasing the product. These risks are in the terms and service agreement and need to be carefully read and understood before entering into a binding contract because if third parties are in the package deal, then that may cause potential issues and or create more areas of vulnerabilities. Privacy concerns or disclosure and access, the information may be an issue among third parties that is another entity who may possibly be breached and who may have access to sensitive information, such as in the SolarWind case. Monitoring and maintenance should be included to keep the product up to date and increase the confidence in software insurance. Additional concerns involve what measures are taken to minimize a cyber attack should one occur, and who bears liability or is the responsible party when one occurs. To development or vendors relinquish responsibility when it falls on the customer solely. These questions and concerns should be carefully agreed upon and looked over through the legal team to ensure assets are protected in fair terms or presence. Thank you for your attention and consideration before decision making. These references were utilized for this briefing. Are there any questions?